Hi, Brennan. Hi, Ellen. Thank you for joining me for our Meet the Artist interview series. Um, so I'm starting off, everyone gets the same question. How okay. old were you when you started taking ballet and what prompted you to start? I was seven years old when I, when my mom enrolled me for summer classes. And I don't remember what prompted me because as long as I can remember, I was always telling my mom, I'm going to be a ballerina. <laughs> and I don't remember where that started. Like, it's just, as soon as I have memory, I remember that I was going to be a dancer. And my mom didn't let me start till I was seven. So she made you wait a long time. Yeah, because she was a dance teacher herself, and she had all these children that would just cry in her laps, and so she was always like, I'm not going to let you start until you actually know what you're doing, otherwise you're not going to learn anything. That was her perspective, and I don't know, I, I, I think it worked out. <laughs> there was never a switch, as, so as long as I can remember, and ever since I started dance, it was always, this is what I'm going to do professionally. I, I didn't really think how big of a feat that was. I just knew that I was going to keep going until I reached what I wanted to do. So you trained in LA, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where do you attribute your sort of main training to? I would attribute it to my time in LA. The thing is, I never stayed anywhere more than four years. Okay. And I think Los Angeles was the longest amount of time. I trained at Los Angeles Ballet Academy. Um, and I definitely attribute my, my base training to that school because I think I started there when I was um, 12 or 11. I went during summer intensive and I was there until I was 16. Um, I turned 12 the first year. And so that also was kind of like the switch, you know, when, when my mom and I decided, okay, if I'm going to do this seriously, then we need to go to a better school. And it was over an hour and a half away. Oh, the wow. drive. So I think that was kind of definitely the point where we decided to be extremely serious about it, you know, going to that school. Um, and it was, it's such a good school and it's still, you know, some schools, they turn out a really good generation and then, you know, they, they lose all their good dancers and they take a while and they build it up. But that school, I have so much respect for my teachers there because they're constantly bringing out such incredible dancers. And I, I feel like that's where I got my good training and I got jazz, contemporary, modern ballet, everything there. And yeah, that makes sense that that would sort of be if there was a tipping point, because if you're going to commit to that much driving, yeah, then it better be. <laughs> I know my poor mom. I think I drove her crazy over those four years because she would drive me and then work the desk all day on Tuesdays and Thursdays. She would work at least eight hours um, and I would dance until nine or 10. And then we would do it again on Thursday. And then I would stay with my dance teacher with the owner until Saturday or Sunday. And then my mom would drive, my mom or my dad would drive and pick me up and take me home. We do it again the next week. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. That's a lot. <laughs> a lot. Um, so from there, is that when you then joined Silicon Valley Ballet? Yeah. Yeah. That's when I auditioned for their summer intensive and I got a small scholarship and I remember I wanted to go to Boston Ballet and I had also gotten into their summer intensive and um, my teacher said, go where they want you, you know, like they, they've shown interest in you. The director has the, the, the director of the school had shown interest in me and she really pushed me to go there. And I, I thought, you know, I want to go to Boston Valley. I want to go to this big, you know, summer intensive. And she really pushed me. So I ended up going and that's when I ended up deciding to stay there and I auditioned for the trainee program and then was there two years the training. Mm -hmm. So what did it mean to be a trainee there? Um, well, it was a lot of work. <laughs> um, that trainee schedule was one of the most intense, I think, times of my dancing career because we would take class with the company in the morning and then rehearse with the company. And then when the company went on lunch break, we didn't get a lunch break. And we had trainee rehearsal during lunch and then we would go back to rehearsal with the company and then when the company went home we would go to school class 
from 5.30 until, uh, it was like 4.30 until 7 or something like that, maybe 8 some nights. It was exhausting. It was over 12 hours of nonstop dancing. <laughs> and I don't know how I survived it. <laughs> I don't either. Yeah. But that only lasted kind of six months because they eventually folded. And so I just stayed on with the school afterwards. Okay. And so is that what is the new ballet studio company? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, they pulled that school out of everything that was collapsing within the company Mm -hmm. and they separated it. And then I spent, you know, a year and a half in the studio company and that was also a very valuable time. So, you know, I attribute a lot to that school as well, but it was more um, just learning how to perform on stage. And it, it was more about performance that time, which, which was good. That's really valuable. I feel like that's something that's missing often for people as they transition from student to professional is that stage experience. That's no, really- definitely. Because I think a lot of students get it from competition. Um, if they, you know, if they don't get enough shows with their, with their studio, they'll do competitions. And I, I was terrible at competition. I mean, not terrible, but I, my nerves would go up and then it's, you know, that one piece. And, uh, I don't know, it just wasn't, I wasn't the competition kid. And so that time to be able to just perform, I don't know, it was, it was at least once every two months or something, and not once, but a show, you know, we would do multiple runs every two months or, or it depended. And there was always little events and we would just improv. So the, the feeling of just performing in front of whatever crowd it was, it, you lose your nerve, you know, and it became so easy. And I think that was extremely valuable for me because I, I would always get so nervous, you know? Yeah. So from there, um, you went to Mexico. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, that is correct. That's quite cool. The Ballet de Monterey. Yes. Um, and was that with the director there was Jose Carreño, who yeah. had been with Silicon Valley Ballet. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. So when it folded, he ended up taking the job uh, position at Ballet de Monterrey. And then he came back. He would come to teach the summer intensives at the school. Okay. And my teacher one of my teachers there he put me in the lead role and um he really pushed for me to be there because he said you know all these other students could be dancing this spot because they didn't have um they didn't have a like a very strong boy in the summer program at the time but so they wanted to put a small girl there and and he said you know we could put a student there but Brennan needs a job so we're putting Brennan here and we need Jose to see her and and he did and he watched me dance on Monday and he hired me on Tuesday wow it was yeah it was really cool <laughs> so then from Tuesday how long did you have to get to Mexico <laughs> well their season started I think within a week or two um, I think the summer intensive was in July and then their season started in August. So I had to wait until the, the visa could be processed, which is why he asked me so quickly. And then I got everything rolling. And I don't think I went until September or October or something like that. It was, it was much later. Mm-hmm. So I did have some time, but it, did, it was very shocking. I wasn't expecting to go to Mexico. You know, I think I dreamed about going to England or whatever, <laughs> you know, and then it, it was kind of the surprise. Did you feel ready? I don't think I did. Um, I was very, it, w- it was a good opportunity. So of course I had to take it, you know, because I think that's the hardest thing about um, professional lifestyle in, in ballet is that they won't accept you until you have experience but you can't get the experience until you're professional, you know, it's like that thing. And so of course, as soon as I got a job offer, I knew I was going to take it, but um, I didn't really feel ready. I kind of was excited to stay another year and keep training and auditioning. And, you know, I had this whole plan in place and, (laughs) and then everything changed, you know, and I changed countries and everything. So I didn't feel ready at all. And how long were you there? I was there two years for two seasons. And is the main language of rehearsals and everything there Spanish? Yeah. 
Can yeah, it is. <laughs> I do now. <laughs> I didn't when I went. The, I remember the first, the, when I first got there, because nobody went with me. I went all by myself. Didn't speak the language. Didn't really know anyone there. I knew Jose and I knew one other dancer who he'd hired from Silicon Valley Ballet, um, Juna EJ. And but we weren't really friends. You know, I knew her, I was acquainted with her, but I was a trainee at the time. So I kind of just showed up on my own. And I remember when I was in the taxi, I was trying to say right and left to the guy because I had Google Maps and, you know, I was trying to tell him where to go and he didn't know where to go. And so he was like telling me, okay, this is the word for right. And this is the word for left. I was like, okay, well then go right, go left. <laughs> it was, it was crazy, but I just, I just faked it the first couple months and I would, you know, just say, see, see, and they'd be like, see, and I'd go, no, no. And they'd go, no, you know, like I, I totally faked it the first couple months. And in rehearsal, I had no idea what was going on. That's good. You picked it up though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you must be a quick study with language. Although yeah. I guess if you're in it sort of all the time, then. Yeah, that makes such a difference. And I think it also helps that class is in French, no matter what, you know, all yeah. the vocabulary is the same. So class was never a problem. Um, and Jose speaks perfect English. It's just that um, he wasn't normally rehearsing me. It was usually the ballet mistress and so I definitely didn't have any idea what was going on in rehearsal, but I know that when I did start to understand, if I wasn't paying attention, I would just pretend I didn't understand. They'd be like, oh, it's okay, it's the American, she doesn't understand. I'd be like, whoops. So then did you decide to go looking for something different? Yeah, and you know, I had been interested in Smewin for a while. I had auditioned at Smewin since I was 17 when, huh? Yeah, when um, Silicon Valley Ballet closed, I um, auditioned when I was 17, and then I auditioned again when I was 18, and didn't get it, and then I waited one year, and then when I was at um, Ballet Monterey, I started to feel like this wasn't where I needed to be. It was a, a good stepping stone, but it wasn't where I wanted to continue my career. And so I needed to start looking for other opportunities. And so I came and took class um, around Christmas, which was months before their audition. And I was just showing up to audition and um, thankfully it worked out. But yeah, it took three, three times <laughs> to get in. Uh, was um, Monterey a more classical company? Yeah, they were. And I think that was also what um, sparked my interest in leaving because even though I, I do love classical ballet, um, I think I was more used to the American companies where it's more mixed and there it was purely classical. They didn't do any contemporary at all. And the final year that I was there, the director changed oh and um, he started to bring in a little bit more contemporary and that was really fun. And I was noticed in that because I had a, a more American style. And so they could tell that I was, it was easier for me to do contemporary. Um, and so I definitely, I really missed having that diversity in the repertoire. So this season is obviously a little bit different in terms of everything, <laughs> but are there, <laughs> are there still things that you're excited about? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited about this season. I think I'm even more excited going into this season than I was going into the last season. Because I well, first off, you know, I was new and so I was kind of nervous and all this and yeah. I didn't really know what to expect. Um, but this season I feel like there's so so much room for innovation and opportunity and creativity and and also, you know, choreographing a little bit on, on my work pod, I'm super excited for that. And it, that's been so fun to, you know, explore that as well and explore choreography and just, just playing around with it with all the restrictions that we have, you know? So I kind of thought that maybe it wouldn't be, that we would be doing less, but now that we we're getting started, I feel really excited. And I don't know, like I wake up excited to go to work every day, which is so cool, you know? <laughs> So that's great. You mentioned that you're choreographing for your pod. Mm -hmm. Now, as I recall, you choreographed just for the first time 
in March. I remember you're saying that you were like sort of on the fence about whether to do it and that Amy, the ballet master, was like, just go for it. Yeah. <laughs> and so you did. So you must have really enjoyed it if you've now volunteered to choreograph again. Yeah, I did. And it's something that I've always been interested in, but you know, it's definitely something that it's so intimidating, especially if you're choreographing on people you work with, you know, and, and as it was my first year, I still didn't feel like I had this really strong connection and I could, you know, tell all my peers and coworkers like, this is what I want. I, you know, I was kind of nervous. And so I wasn't sure it was the thing I wanted to do in my first year. And so I'm really glad that she pushed me to do it because it was honestly so enjoyable and everyone at SMU and is always so lovely to work with and so kind and patient, you know, like they're rooting for you, you know, the same way that I was in their rehearsals, which is such a nice feeling. And so then going into this year, I felt that if the opportunity was there, that I really wanted to expand on that and, and, you know, get some experience choreographing. And so I, I still have that feeling, you know, kind of nervous about it, but I, I feel like it's a too good of an opportunity to miss. And it's not like I'm choreographing on the entire company. It's just a couple people. So I really wanted to jump at it. If, you know, jump at the opportunity since it was there. Other thing you've been doing is teaching a lot, mm -hmm. um, in part in our online class program. Um, but you've been teaching for a long time, I think. Um, yeah, I, I did start teaching pretty young. I started assisting classes when I was around, I don't know, very, very young, I think 15, 14. And then when I went to um, New Ballet, when, when that started, I took the ABT teachers training course and okay. was certified up to, you know, the, the younger levels. And I started helping substitute classes there. And so I started doing that when I was 17. And again, that was amazing experience because I got to work with students who were just a little bit younger than I was. And I got to teach contemporary as well as ballet. And um, I didn't teach it all when I was, oh no, I taught the second year in Mexico, but the first year I didn't. So I did give it a bit, bit of a break, but um, I, I do feel like I have been teaching a while, but at the same time, teaching is something that I feel like I have no experience in, you know? <laughs> I, I always think, oh my gosh, I'm too young to be telling these people what to do. I don't even know, you know? Like, I'm still learning. And so I always get, I always feel like there's so much to learn with teaching. And that's definitely something I want to keep working on and, and, you know, go to more courses and, and learn because there's so much to learn. Do you feel like teaching helps your dancing? Yeah, I do. Because I find that when I'm nagging on these students over and over again, you know, and I'm telling them lift your arms or, you know, en engage your core and pull in your ribs. Then I go into class and I realize I'm doing all of those things, you know, <laughs> and I think that's why they bother me. And then I realize, oh gosh, I, ha I have to start fixing all these things that I've been yelling at them for, you know, so de it definitely helps me. How has it been over Zoom versus in person? It's been fun. You know, it, I, I kind of thought it would be horrible when all of this, when everything started and it was, you know, people started transitioning to transitioning to taking ballet classes over Zoom. That concept was so crazy to me, you know, and I think I was one of those people who held off and thought, oh, I don't need to take online class. And then <laughs> everyone was doing it and we had to get class in somehow, you know? And so then I started teaching and I, I think it's definitely something that got some, took some getting used to. Um, but now I really enjoy it. It's, it's, but it's been really fun and teaching the classes with Smewin has been really fun. I think especially working with the adults because they're just so excited to be learning and to be moving around in their homes. Cause a lot of them, you know, were just as cooped up as we were and they, they were just so excited to move and they still are. It's amazing. You know, I thought, okay, well, things are loosening up. Maybe they're going to drop out of the classes and people are still coming to the classes. So excited and so ready to work. I love it. So now it's something I really look forward to every week. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, right, so you just mentioned that it's impressive how everyone has adapted sort of. Yeah. So the arts have obviously been like really hit 
by all of the changes. Are there things that you think the performing arts in general have already changed that are really positive and you want to see continue? Or are there things you haven't seen yet but would like to see? I think that's a really good question. Um, I think one of the things that I do like about what's going on is that it has become, I feel some of it has become more accessible be to the public because people are creating videos from their homes and putting it on Instagram just because they want to create art, you know? And so I feel like it's inspired a lot of people and inspired people who wouldn't normally go to see ballet. I think one thing that I also really love about it is because there was such a lack of it, for instance, live music. Now when I hear live music, it's just, you just see people are drawn to it and people have such an appreciation for it. And for me, it's hard because there's something so special about the theater. So it's hard for me to say like, oh yeah, I want, you know, everything to stay like this sort of, you know, whatever, or this certain thing, because I think the outdoor um, performances are amazing. And I think that should be something that should be done more often. And I think that should stay, but you know, it's hard to say, like, I don't miss the theater, but I definitely think the lack of art has made people so appreciative of it, you know, including myself. So I think that's something that's really beautiful that I would hope people just continue to have that appreciation of the arts and to remember, you know, how it makes them feel and that it's kind of this, this relief from everything that's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, last question. Okay. And we're going back to ballet here and you can either choose to look towards the past or the future or okay. both if you want. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite ballet that you've danced or choreographer you've worked with or mm -hmm. a dream ballet to dance or dream choreographer to work with? Okay. Um, favorite ballet I've danced? Well, the thing is, is I've haven't really, you know, ever done anything notable in with a with a real company. I've always been sort of like corps de ballet. Um, but when I danced Giselle with Silicon Valley Ballet, I was just so in love with it. It's my favorite ballet. I love it so much. And every time I dance it, I would just cry. And you know, if I was, you know, Willie on stage, I would just stand there crying because it was so beautiful. And I'd be in so much pain, but I just I felt so happy to be in pain for such a beautiful ballet, you know? <laughs> and then favorite choreographer that I would love, love, love to work with is Christopher Wheeldon. I think he's a genius. And I, um, I watched his American in Paris on Broadway and I saw him outside and I wanted to go up to him and, you know, just tell him how much I loved his work. And I waited and waited because I was so nervous and he walked away and I just <laughs> cried. <laughs> So hopefully I get to meet him again someday and work for him. Okay. Um, well, that's it. That's the end of our interview. Thank awesome. you. Cool. Thank you so much.